Audrey, Kevin, <laughs> Holter, Nate, every, everyone. Hey, congratulations for a small time. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> this, is a, this is a wonderful drama, especially the fact that it, it shows, you know, the, uh, the rural America that, that is actually, I, I, I want to say it feels so real. Because because this is this is something that's actually happening in, anywhere and everywhere. So I'll, I'll I'll just start off with the with the easy question. Um, um, Naive, um, where did the original idea came from? What what sparked you to uh, to write this story? Uh, first, it's Neop. Sorry, Neop. <laughs> everyone has a, a difficult time pronouncing my name. Um, uh, so it, it started from a, it started as a short, uh, and the short uh, was called Joyride, and that is the first, the earliest part that you see in the feature, um, where she goes on that motorcycle ride and she takes the kitten and that that section, um, and it was just born out of a, a memory I had as a child. Uh, and that I wanted to explore and embellish and kind of uh, expand upon. So then after the short existed and I never had the intention of making a feature, um, <laughs> but something about it made, like I think it was the, all of the characters were so interesting to me and I really wanted to know what would happen to them if we, allowed them to continue to exist a little longer. So uh, that's when, you know, I called everyone up. He's like, hey, wanna keep going? And thank goodness everyone said yes. And onward we went. That is wonderful. Well, then, then let's talk to, uh, you know, our cast, uh, why they were attracted. Why, why are you attracted to a project like this? Audrey, let's start with you. Yeah, um, I mean, I love, dark things like this drama I mean when I started I was little but I think as the as the film progressed I think the older I got the more interesting I got the more drawn to the story I guess I was and this also sparked something with acting it was my first role so I think seeing just something about this darkness to it was really really exciting really fun Kevin uh I loved the tortured soul aspect of Lonnie, and uh, it's always kind of fun to dive into that because normally in life I'm more of a happy person. So it's great to find that underbelly of what's what's going on with him. And uh, it was that first day on set with everybody. It was just it was this incredible messed up family uh, within within that first scene uh, with the cookies when she brings the cookies out and. It was, it was just a, a great experience. And then when Neov came to me to be part of part three, I, I jumped at the chance because I had, I had had such a great time on set. Wow. Walter. Um, uh, Neov and I have uh, worked together before. She directed me in a, in a Poe play in college, um, Go Skidmore Thoroughbreds. We used to be the Wombats and it was a much cooler name. Um, so she reached out to me after years of not being in contact uh, with with this role and uh, has said since that I, I sort of came up a little to her when she was writing Rick, which you would think might not be a compliment, but I took it as one. Uh, and then and then we finally connected and basically immediately we're like, yeah, this will work. This will be great. Um, and and Rick was a draw, still is a draw because he's the bad guy you like. Like that that's to me that's the that's the best kind of role to play. Either the hero you kind of hate, anti-heroes are interesting too, but bad guy roles are meaty, but they can be cartoony if they're human and there's some charm, then then I mean that's just so much fun to play because it's so thick and, and you can you can reach into sort of your your light and your dark and 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 you have dragged I think some of the best work I've ever done out of me. Uh, because there was that trust from working with her a million years ago. And as soon as he got on set, like Kevin said, you know, like that, a set on a, on a tiny budget film, everyone's there for the, for the right and the same reason. 
and um, and you know, Audrey never done it before. Just made us all look like such lame <laughs> oats, you know. <laughs> He's just absolute pro queen on day one. Like, oh, when I grew up, I want to be like that nine year old. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, every everybody was great, and um, and and to just be a part of that group was was phenomenal. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm I'm going to ask Audrey in a bit, but I'm going to ask Nia um, first. Is uh, there are so many adult themes, um, you know, in, in a film like this, how, how did you, uh, you know, try to seek out, you know, a child to, uh, to head this project? It must have been a long, enduring process, and you ended up with Audrey here. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, my intention was never to, like, talk about these adult themes as anything other than through the eyes of a child. Uh, so that was the whole interest for me in uh, the film. So of course it was a, a bit of a challenge to find said child. Um, and <laughs> I just put out a casting uh, and a, a bunch of kids uh, responded and um, And, and Audrey, it, it was really, lit she literally had never acted before at all. Uh, so she was the riskiest choice of all <laughs> of my options. Uh, and one of the youngest. Um, and she didn't have anything to show, right? But she came and she auditioned and um, she, was able to be a listener um, rather than, you know, do, do stuff for the camera, right? Which is a, a, a trap that I think a lot of young kids fall into. They have to like evoke uh, whatever they're supposed to evoke, whatever emotion, right, goes with the moment. And Audrey, uh, was able to just listen to what her partner was saying and have a real reaction, um, which is for me, beautiful and gold. So, you know, once I saw that she, she, she had that, uh, then I was like, okay, you know, she's the obvious choice for me. We're, we're just gonna go and see what happens. <laughs> and she, took like the first day she arrived, uh, there was this little moment of like, what does one do, right? What is acting? And then, you know, within an hour, she was like there on it, understood the whole thing. So, you know, she's just a, a, a amazing, talented uh, person. Wow. <laughs> Obviously, Audrey, you, you know this question is coming up to you because um, as, as a first-time actor and dealing with adult themes, I'm actually surprised that, um, that you could actually, you know, tackle onto these adult themes and portray your character with such innocence. Now, I want to know is how did you manage to pull that off or were you truly innocent not realizing what these adult themes are on, on production? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think as when I first, for the first part of it, I think I really had no idea what was going on, I think, from it. Um, and I think, like Niao said, I think that really helped the film. But I, as, as, it, as we started filming, as the years went on, I slowly grasped the concept of it. And I mean, it was, it's a really beautiful film. And I think that adds to the part of it that I really had no, I was Emma. I didn't really have any idea what was going on, but it was an amazing thing. And thank you, Niav, for saying all that. But yeah, it was an amazing opportunity. Terrific. I also love the fact that the theme of a film like this has sort of like that uh, father figure that she was, you know, missing throughout the uh, movie. I'll, I'll, I'll start with uh, Holter first, because even though he was the villain, he, he, he tried his best to kind of fit in those shoes in his own way. So Holter, you, you could talk about that, but I also want to know is, uh, 
You still have that ponytail? I can't tell. No, no. Um, it is uh, recently cut off by my own daughter. Um, so it's a little jagged on the back. But yes, I had it. I've actually had three over the years. Um, and and weirdly enough, I think I still have all of them somewhere around the house because um, it's just hard to get rid of something like that. But um, yeah, so to the, the, the father figure, that's sort of what I was talking about before. Like, this is, this is a guy who more than likely will shove anyone and anything aside to get what it is he thinks he needs that day. Um, and he's capable of doing that and getting those things. And yet this kid tugs a string. And, and I mean, really, the only time he does something purely nice, like bring groceries to this, this you know, shattered human and her daughter, it's because of Emma. It's because Emma's there. You know, I think if this had happened to an ex of his and the, the, who, and the child had nothing to do with it, he, he'd be long gone. And so there's, and, and I don't want to get all deep about like, is he missing his childhood or does he feel he needs a child? He's just, he's a person who I think sees beauty and can drink it in, in and, and like childish innocence and openness is beautiful. It, you know, I mean, it's, you almost can't look away from it. And so she mutes his negativity, even as like, he's got her on the back of the bike and he's doing drug deals. Like, but when he gets back to the bike, it's like, oh, hey, there's this, there's this creature who just, on another creature, we'll put it in the bag, let's go. But like, I don't know, it was, it was very easy to do with Emma. I was so pleased that she trusted me on the back of that motorcycle, you know, 15 seconds after we met and uh and some of the most fun I had was was roaring around northeastern Pennsylvania with her back there with the like the responsibility of telling the story and the responsibility of doing my acting and the responsibility of not tossing a nine-year-old off the side of the highway at five miles an hour it like that level of pressure is is what makes acting the thing I need more than anything else um and and to feel like we pulled it off is just, it's a testament to everybody involved. Um, and then she had this real father, <laughs> whatever. Kevin, that was my segue, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, Kevin, now the, the ball bounces uh, to you. Uh, Kevin, how did you get into the headspace of that character who, who suffers from PTSD? Uh, and then, yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, a couple of my friends uh, have gone through that and uh, and made it to the other side. And I talked to both of them at length about uh, just the headspace that they were in, what it took to get out of it, uh, but also just the craziness of it all. Uh, and so, and the physicality was a big part of it as well. Um, so, I tried to get some of that into the film, uh, but yeah, I think I, I leaned a lot on my two friends to see who this guy was. And also, you know, we all have demons or whatnot in our lives. So you tap into that and you use that as a substitute perhaps for something like this, since I certainly don't know about op opioid addiction or um, PTSD, but, uh, but yeah, so. Kevin, at the end of the day, was that was that easy to turn off uh, that character, you know, when the cameras are off? Yeah, I think so. I, I think part of it was just um, acting opposite Audrey because she was so optimistic uh, that I would just lean on her and we would have fun offset or in between takes, uh, which was really kind of a godsend when you're dealing with something that dark and deep. So it was, it was this nice balance for me. Wow, that's terrific, Aud Audrey. Who, who, who's the who's the better father to you, Hol Holter or Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think as it's such a dark thing, but we really did have a lot of fun. I mean, it was so fun to film over the years. It was a really fun experience. Yeah, that that is great because the 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 one the one scene I really love was uh, was the cookie scene. And 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 so on, but I, I do I do have to cringe at, at you know the passing of the beer. But I'm curious, what did the what did the cookies taste like? I mean, I thought they tasted pretty good. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I thought they were pretty good. Um, yeah, I can't say much. They were 
chocolate chip, I think they were. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love good chocolate chip. So. And yeah, and as is the nature on a low budget film, the later you get in the day, the better things taste. <laughs> um, so we, I think we went through a couple of batches before we got that thing shot. Um, and, and yeah, no, they were they were absolutely all they were cracked up to be. Except for poor Kevin, who I don't think ate one, or did you eat one? Oh, I had a couple of bites. Aided? Yeah, I did. I had a few bites. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> and and Andre, you you, you had you had to pretend to drink alcohol, right? That wasn't real beer, or was that a reaction to real beer? <laughs> I mean, I think yeah, it was. I think it was like sparkling water or something. But I I hate fizzy drinks and or anything, so. Whenever I do have to do, which is quite often, actually, I am drinking alcohol in things is it's always sparkling water. So it's like a, a weird reaction because I hate the taste of the bubbles. So it's it is kind of a natural reaction. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like that, too. I don't like bubbles either. So we have something in common. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, tell tell us about developing, you know, the setting, of, you know, the of rural America, because the one thing that I, I can't actually because, uh, you know, I'm calling here from, um, you know, Fresno, California, which is, you know, a rural setting here in, in California, very, very much red country. But uh, tell us about developing, you know, God, guns and country into into a film like this. Well, I. So the place that we set it uh, is a place that I live part time um, and uh, discovered kind of recently. And so as I was writing it, part of my uh, writing was just kind of discovering this very strange thing, you know, the God, guns, flag, uh, country, uh, message and and out there in Pennsylvania where we shot it is heavily heavily Trump and that was before I believe he was elected but there was uh, all of his banners all over the place um, and uh, so it, it I just a lot of it was informed by the area and we also had the really uh, were very lucky to have a lot of all of the extras were locals and then a lot of local people dealing with uh, who had kind of dealt with all of the issues that are in the film, um, came to audition for small parts and, um, and it's just very, very present, that whole thing out there. Um, so it, and that helped me humanize it, I think, because I think it would be easy for me uh, without spending much time out there to see it in this caricatural way because it is a little bit crazy, you know, uh, teaching kids to shoot and, and you know, always packing uh, when going to the mini mart, you know, like, and this obsession with flags everywhere. Um, but it just feels, it's, it's part of normal life out there. So getting to know people who live there is also getting to know, you know, why this is part of their normal lives and uh, the, the mindset that goes into it. And it's, it's perfectly legitimate choices and processes for them. So um, that was very interesting to, do the work of making sure that everyone was a, a full human and had reasons for everything that they were doing and believing um, rather than kind of, you know, writing the idea of people. Wow. Audrey, how, how, uh, how was it like uh, playing with the gun on production that uh, I was scared for you, honestly. Yeah, it was, it was definitely scary. It was, yeah, because also, like, as Niamh said, it was, you know, we're in Pennsylvania, you know, I've never done these kind of things before. So it was a very, it was pretty scary. I remember my mom was like, <laughs> running away. She was, you know, we were all scared, but you know, we knew we were safe, but it was definitely, yeah, it was a little scary. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. Maybe you could have switched with Kevin because apparently all he got to shoot was as zombies on on screen or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, excellent. Well, let, let, let me uh, start uh, wrapping things up because uh, one of the things that uh, that I, I do want to talk about is is the cat. Um, and and I'm assuming you it was it wasn't just a cat. You also had to act with with the kitten at the same time. So, Audrey, tell tell us about acting with the cat and the kitten, and uh, and did you really get along with the kitten, especially how you were handling the kitten? Oh yeah, he was, it was, I love animals. So being, getting to act with the kitten was amazing. And then um, I think later on when he got older, we started um, where we were staying in this cabin, we started bringing him into the room. And so we would sleep with him at night and I got to bond with him. He was really sweet. I definitely wanted to take him home, but yeah, it was, it was really fun. It's, I know it sounds weird, but it was kind of felt like, you know, bonding with, almost, I guess not really, but kind of a scene partner. I don't know, you know, a lot of my scenes were with him and it was, you know, I love animals and I was, you know, I was smaller than, so, you know, I'd be like, you know, talking to him and stuff. It was like, but yeah, I, it was really fun to work with. I love animals. Yeah. Well, just to note, you, uh, Audrey, you did take the kitten home. You adopted I, the kitten and then gave, mm -hmm. gave him to a really happy home, a relative of yours, right? Yeah, it was um because there were two different. We had the we had our kitten and an older cat, and I did. I remember I my mom was not very happy, but I really wanted to take the kit. I I did take the kitten home, and my, we had we had um uh, we had like two dogs at the time. I think so. It was a lot of animals in the same. But we did. Um, my cousin took him, and she he's still living a great life. He's still a little kitty movie star. <laughs> And, and the adult cat, uh, who was a, a stand-in, like an a adult version of the kitten, because it was two separate cats, mm -hmm. is now my cat. And they were both kind of uh, adopted from shelters, um, but went on to have happy homes. So I, I feel happy that we gave that to the, the feline kind in our production. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is great to hear that uh, in, in, in a drama like Small Time, we always have some kind of happy ending somehow. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, speaking um, to us about uh, Small Time. Um, it's, it's a wonderful film. Um, ho hopefully, uh, down the road, there, there might, be, uh, might be more um, of, of the stories out, out in rural America, but this, this is a drama that everyone should check. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. it.